Hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, so, I have made every single video you could possibly make on one single fly controller. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look in the description. I'll leave you a link to my Omnibus playlist. And hopefully this will be the last video I have to make on it. In those videos, I have one showing you how to power this with the full voltage of your battery, which you can. That's what it's made for. It has a built-in voltage regulator. And you do that using these two pins right here which are, uh, you got power in the middle, ground on the outside, which are three pins down. Some guys get this confused with these pins because the writing on the back is confusing and they end up uh, put, placing power and ground on these pins, which is not right, and they fry the processor. So then I made videos on how to replace the processor. I've also made a video on how to replace the voltage regulator. So let's talk about uh, you want you don't want this voltage regulator. You want to power this a different way, but still get voltage in Betaflight, your on-screen display, and telemetry. Well, that that's actually very easy. And you may want to do this because uh, you know these things do get really hot. Is that's absolutely normal. I've said that before. It's just nature of this type of regulator. Um, I mean, I've never had any problems on. I got eight of these, no problems at all. But anyway, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So with this regulator, uh, we, we need to remove this from the circuit. And uh, we're going to power this with 5 volts coming from a PDB. Because uh, you know we'll use a PDB that has a voltage regulator built in. I know this looks, this is a mess right now, but this one has a 12 volt and 5 volt regulators built in. You can either watch my video on how to replace this regulator and only watch half of it. Just for the part on how to remove it, or the simple way would be uh, just take some wire cutters like this and you want to clip both of these on both ends. The reason you would do that is because this is the voltage in, it's going to step it down to 5 volts and kick it back out through this leg. You are uh, effectively taking this out of the circuit by cutting both these legs off. Uh, the middle is the ground and that's not going to matter so you can leave the regulator on the board. Uh, because a ground isn't going to affect anything. So uh, instead of cutting these, I'm actually going to remove it using my hot air gun and some uh, flux paste because I, I've, why waste a regulator? Uh, I'll save this for later, use it on something else. So let me remove it, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the regulator removed. And by the way, uh, the video I was referring to on how to remove it, that's actually in my repairs playlist, not the Omnibus playlist. So uh, these videos are going to be in one of the two. Just I'll leave you both links uh, in the description. So with this removed and now out the circuit, let's talk about how to power this and still get voltage in Betaflight, your OSD, and uh, telemetry. I'm going to hold this just like it is in the wiring diagram if you did receive one when you purchased this. This pin right here is for the receiver as well as power and ground for the receiver. And then we've got motors 1, 2, 3, and 4. As I said before, three pins down in the middle is uh, this is what you would normally use to power the entire flight controller and everything connected to it and automatically place voltage in Betaflight OSD and telemetry with that ground. But now, we are going to power this with 5 volts from a PDB, a regulator built into your PDB, right? You can place this 5 volt power wire, you know, just take a piece of scrap wire, nothing fancy or special, wire it both to your PDB and also to any of these uh, motor pins, the middle pins. Uh, so this one, you know, for motors 1 to 4 in the middle, any of them. And then same thing goes for ground, any of these pins on the edge. You want to take another piece of scrap wire, or well, two pieces technically, and you will solder this somewhere on your PDB where it's getting the full voltage of the battery, just like you did before, like you normally would. Um, so this can be directly to the ends of your battery leads, or it could be anywhere else, uh, you know, just anywhere where there's no step downs, regulators, anything. It could even be one of your ESC uh, power and ground pads. In doing this, even though you're still sending the full voltage of the battery to these two pins, it will not power the flight controller or anything connected to it, but it will place that voltage in Betaflight and everything else. To power it, 
like I said, we we're going to be using these pins with five volts. Now, because we we're powering this with five volts, some of the stuff I said in the video on how to add in your camera and video transmitter goes out the window. But it really doesn't matter because, like I said before in those videos, I don't recommend powering your camera and video transmitter off of the board itself. Just use the PDB like you normally would with any other fly controller. Unless you know what you're doing, I mean, I'm not saying you can't, just keep in mind you are only getting 5 volts. That means you're not going to be able to power the video transmitter at all off of this. Okay, so I'm editing this and I know someone's going to try to correct me. Yes, you can power your VTX with the full voltage of the battery off the fly controller by jumping the RAM pin and the VBAT pin, but just just power it half of an inch below the fly controller off your PDB. Keep things simple. You can get 5 volts for your camera, but I'm not going to explain that. I'm just going to tell you, uh, if you know what you're doing, then obviously you know what you're doing. Go ahead. If you don't know how to do this, then just use the 5 volt pad off your PDB. Keep things simple, and that eliminates your chances of screwing anything up. So now let me go ahead and wire this thing in, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here is how I have everything wired. Um, I've got the uh, just a piece of scrap wire going either from the battery lead or anywhere else where it's the PDB is getting the full voltage of the battery to these two pins here. Uh, power in the middle, ground right here. Uh, you can't see the wire because it, it, I soldered it from underneath just to keep it looking really clean. And I did the same thing over here. Uh, I've got a piece of scrap wire going from the 5 volt regulator to, uh, I used motor number one, but like I said, you can use any of these motor pins, and then the ground wire going to this ground pin. Then I placed my uh, ESC motor wires, you know, one to four here. I've got the camera video going in here, video transmitter coming out here. And that's pretty much it. Um, my video transmitter has the 5 volt regulator built in, so it kicks an additional 5 volts back out which is going to power my camera. If your VTX doesn't have that then uh, you can either get 5 volts from any of the remaining motor power pins in, in the middle or you have a few 5 volt power pins over here just look at your wiring diagram or you could even power the camera directly off that same 5 volt regulator off your PDB. Uh, but point is I'm not pa powering camera or VTX off the flight controller. My VTX is actually being powered off a 12 volt regulator on my PDB. So now I'm going to hook everything up and take you into beta flight just to show you that this does work because I know someone's going to get, leave me a comment saying, my flight controller fried, you told me wrong. So let's plug in a USB. I'm getting the power light and status light. Nothing fried. Let's go into beta flight. It does connect and everything's working. We're not seeing a voltage at the top because I don't have a LiPo plugged in. So let's plug that in. We're seeing 15 volts even up top. So let's take this voltage checker and check it. And we're getting 15 volts even. If it's not perfect then you can just watch my video in the beta flight playlist on how to calibrate your voltage but it should be pretty close and if you're still not seeing a voltage at all at the top then make sure you have VBAT turned on and save and reboot so that's going to do it guys hope this works out for you thanks for watching i'll see you again soon